This Headless Professor video is about z-scores and percentiles. We're going to use z-scores and percentiles when you have an interval or ratio scale. It can be either discrete or continuous. You need to have a score for a specific subject, a case, that you want to compare with the norms for that particular variable. So you must have the population norms. Specifically, you must have a mean and a standard deviation from the population figures. Here's how to do it. We're going to take the raw score of that particular subject and then subtract the mean of the population. We then divide by the standard deviation. The quotient is the z-score. Now at this point it would be good to do an error check. If the raw score was above the mean, the z-score should be positive. If the raw score was below the mean, the z-score should be negative. If the raw score was equal to the mean, the z-score should be zero. It is very rare for a z-score to be below negative three or above positive three. Here's an example. What is the z-score of someone who scores 130 on an IQ test. Well, 130 would be the raw score. IQ tests have a mean of 100, that's the average IQ, and a standard deviation of 15. So, here's how you calculate it. Take the 130, the raw score, subtract the mean of 100, and that gives us a numerator of 30. That means 30 points above average. We then take that numerator of 30 and divide by a denominator of 15, that's the standard deviation, and that leaves us with 2 as the z-score. That says that we are two standard deviations above the mean. So, here's the error check. If the raw score was above the mean, the z-score should be positive. Yes, we got a positive 2 as our z-score. Here's the other error check. It is very rare for a z-score to be below negative 3 or above positive 3. Yes, even though the subject had a high IQ, he is not above a z-score of 3. Here's another example. What is the z-score of someone who scores 85 on an IQ test? Here the raw score is 85. The mean and standard deviation remain the same at 100 and 15, respectively. So here's how you calculate it. Take the raw score of 85, subtract the mean of 100, and that gives us a numerator of negative 15. That means 15 points below average. We then take that negative 15 as our numerator, divide by 15, which is the standard deviation, for our denominator, and that gives us a z-score of negative 1. That's one standard deviation below the mean. Let's do the error check. If the raw score was below the mean, the z-score should be negative. Yes, we got a negative 1. The other error check says that it's very rare for a z-score to be below negative 3 or above positive 3. Yes, even though the subject had a low IQ, he is not below a z of negative 3. The next step is to convert the z to a percentile. 
So we go to a Z table. This is based upon what is called the standard curve, or normal curve, or Gauss curve. To use the Z table, we're going to look for a specific row. And we're going to find the row which represents the ones and tenths place of our Z score. We're then going to find the column for the hundredths place of our Z score. We then take the number that appears in the table and we add it to 0.5 if the Z score was positive and we would take that number and subtract it from 0.5 if the Z score was negative. We then take that P value and multiply by 100 to get the percentile. We round off to a whole percentile. Let's convert a Z score of positive 2 to a percentile. We look at our table and we would go down to the row of 2.0 and look at the column of 0 0.00. And here we see the corresponding number 0.4772. We take that number, we add it to 0.5 because the z-score was positive, and we get 0.9772. Multiply that by 100, 97.72. Round off and we see that this individual would be in the 98th percentile. In other words, out of a hundred people in the population, this individual would have a higher IQ score than 98 of them. Well, that's the genius range of IQ, 130 and above, because it is in the top 2%. Let's do the error check. If the raw score is greater than the mean, the percentile is greater than 50. And if the raw score is greater than the mean, the percentage is greater than 50, but not over 100, because you can't be higher than 100%. If the raw score is less than the mean, the percentile is less than 50, but it cannot be negative. We cannot have a negative percent. Now sometimes in doing the calculation, you may find yourself with a negative. But that's why we're doing this error check. If you find yourself with a negative, that's because you subtracted 0.5 from the number instead of subtracting the number from 0.5. Of course, if the raw score is equal to the mean, the percentile will be 50. Being at the 50th percentile is really the definition of the median. And in a normally distributed population, the mean equals the median equals the mode. So let's convert the z-score of negative 1 to a percentile. We go down to the row of 1.0, look at the column of 0, .00, and then we read the proportion 0 0.3413. We take 0.5 and subtract 0.3413 to get 0.1587. We then multiply that by 100 to get 15.87. That's a normal range IQ. If the raw score is less than the mean, the percentile is less than 50, but it cannot be negative. I think we met that error check. And remember, if you do get a negative percentile, you made a mistake. You subtracted 0.5 from the number and not the number from 0.5. And if the raw score is equal to the mean, 
you'll have a percentile of 50. Hope you enjoyed this latest Headless Professor video on z-scores and percentiles. Create your very own video podcast from PowerPoint. Log on to authorstream.com. It's absolutely free.